The tongue and groove is another very useful joint in woodwork and typically it's used when you've got a broad expanse and you want to cover it in solid timber rather than using veneered particle board or plywood. And you do it by tongue and grooving a number of planks together lengthwise. It is very important with tongue and grooving that the material be dressed exactly to the same thickness and also that the uh, edges are nice and square to their faces. So always test fit before you do the tongue and grooving to make sure the pieces butt up against each other nicely. It is also very important with tongue and grooving that you test all your settings first. So I typically take a couple of small offcuts of the wood I'll be using for the job and test them on that and write down the settings that I achieve. For the first cut, I've got my saw blade set at 12 and a half millimeters above the table. That's plenty high enough for tongue and grooving. And I've got my fence set at 10 millimeters. Uh, 10 millimeters plus two and a half for my saw blade. There's your 12 and a half. So we're basically 12 and a half by 12 and a half. The first cuts in tongue and grooving should always be done with the wood up tall on edge. Simple reason being that when you do cuts three and four and create that tongue, you want to be sitting down on your nice, secure, wide face rather than teetering up on the tongue that you've just created. So always start off with the wood standing up tall. And as you'll see, I'll just keep the wood against the fence and do one cut from this side against the fence, turn the wood and do another cut with the other face against the fence and that'll give me a dead central tongue. That tongue must of course be dead central because I did two identical rebates. Now I'm just moving my fence out by the thickness of my saw blade, two and a half mil. And two and a half mil. And now I'll try my groove. Just before I do, I find it's a very good idea to slightly raise the saw blade. Just gives you a little bit of room for the glue to come into when you finally glue it together and it stops it binding up and holding the cut very slightly open. So I just raise the blade about half a millimetre or so and another two cuts. That could be just right. I'll just take out the central fin for a moment. I'll just remember my setting before it was just under 13. I'll just take out that central fin. There we go. And then do a test fit. Now that's a beautiful fit. You can see the tiny gap there for my glue. Uh, a word of warning, don't make your test pieces too snug because what will happen, they're just short pieces. If you then use those same settings and did very long pieces, they wouldn't be dead straight and you might have a really hard time clamping them up. Uh, make your test pieces so that you can slide them, but they're not sloppy. There might be some instances in your woodwork where, for example, you've tongue and grooved a narrow piece of board and you want to recut those grooves because they're the wrong size. And you might have to be working with a narrow piece up on edge and teetering on a fairly inadequate base. And then you've got things to worry about like, will the workpiece fall down the slot in the table and become jammed? Well, here's a simple solution to that. Get yourself a piece of uh, flexible material like plywood or four millimeter MDF. Make sure it's large enough so that you can uh, hold it well clear of the blade front and back. 
hold it down on the table and then you'll be plunging it down on the saw blade. Make sure you raise your saw blade by the four millimeters or whatever of the uh, mask material that you'll be using and then it's as simple as this. And then you can either tape it down to your table with some masking tape or ducting tape, leaving room for the workpiece to pass through. Or you could, if you wished, uh, use 8mm or 5 16 coach bolts up through the slot in the protractor strip and bolt this down to the table. But that will give you a mask to fill in the slot in the table if you're doing narrow work on edge. A simple alternative to tongue and grooving is called the spline joint where basically you make two grooves and you glue a piece of wood called the spline in between them to act in the same way as your tongue does. And it is best to use plywood for this spline material because the cross laminations will make it much less likely to split than a long sliver of natural material.